What's up guys? Classy Metal here. I've got a fairly large amount of stuff to cover in this video. Um, I don't know what all I'm going to show. I'm just going to keep going until I get tired or my voice starts going and uh, we're just going to going to push through it. I know I look like trash. I had huge plans uh, of things I wanted to take care of today. I have done nothing. Um, I went to the Primitive Man uh, 10 year anniversary tour in Memphis last night and I've never had a live show uh, kind of throw me it almost feels like a a fit of oppression not depression just oppression I just had this heaviness this and darkness that just kind of enveloped me uh, during the show and I've been trying to shake it today I wanted to do a, 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 at least a video showing the stuff I picked up at the concert but uh, I just couldn't get the motivation behind me to, to get going, so I, I grabbed some fun things and some things that I wanted to show that didn't have anything to do, to do with the concert. It just made this a, um, a a fairly large just collection and just different stuff video. Uh, I figured that would be the best way for me to power through it. <laughs> I know I look awful, but we're just gonna we're gonna go through it. Um, I'm gonna start off with the stuff that I picked up last night at the at the show. Uh, it was five bands that played. I was familiar or at least somewhat familiar with all of the bands except for the first band. Uh, there was a band called Elizabeth Color Wheel, I believe was the name. It was my first introduction, my first time ever ever seeing or hearing anything from them. I was intrigued. Uh, I didn't pick anything up from them. I want to, uh, I think it's a band that I would like to listen to like through headphones and, and just kind of, it was a very atmospheric feel going on. Some of the stuff was... Uh, very beautiful and there was these these contrast and atmospheres between beautiful and abrasive and, and it's a it's a band that i'm going to have to uh seek out and, and and try to discover a little bit more on my own uh the the next band was a band that i was excited to see play i featured uh an ep back in 2019 on this channel from uh the band body void the ep i, I featured back then was uh you will know the fear you forced upon us i did have that wrote down it was a long album title I picked up this shirt uh, from Body Void last night, and I have to give kudos to these guys. Um, <clears throat> if you're going to do a tour through the Deep South and throw a, uh, a KKK member on fire on your shirt, then I have to give you kudos on that. I thought that was hilarious, and I had to uh, I had to grab that shirt. I love Body Void. Um, they're droney, sludgy doomy just awesome atmospheric stuff I, I i've i've loved them ever since i heard that first uh ep that that i featured they were the only band that was selling cds last night so if you're going to this tour and you're planning on picking up some uh cd albums unless you're wanting to pick up the body void album uh it's not going to happen i did not grab their cd last night because i had already picked it up on Bandcamp. Uh, this is their release that came out last year, Bury Me Beneath This Rotting Earth. Absolutely love this album. It contains my favorite Body Void track, which is A Wound, which was what they started the their set with last night as well. So I got to hear my favorite track. They had some uh, mic issues during that song, unfortunately. But uh, as the singer said, uh, we got to use our imagination. So, But it was uh, it was very nice actually getting to see them live. Uh, the next band that played was uh, Jarhead Fertilizer. I don't know if you guys are familiar with them or not. Um, when you see the the band uh, logo there, you can see that they have that. Uh, they they were uh, very closely associated with Dystopia. I think they were um, <clears throat> built from the remnants of that band. They are. For me, they sounded like knuckle-dragging death metal mixed with power violence. I absolutely loved them. Um, I had not really heard a whole lot going in to, to last night's show from uh, Jarhead Fertilizer. They had vinyl on sale at the show, and I, I didn't know that there weren't CDs uh, for their full length at all. So I just passed on the vinyl. I was like, well, worst case, I'll just pick it up from their band camp. Um, I, I kind of did a, some some looking around, and there were no CDs. I guess they just weren't pressed, and uh, the vinyl was sold out on their band camp, so that was a, a fail for me. But I absolutely I really like them. I, I love it when the um, the vocalist does the drums as well. When you're able to pull off those growls and those gutturals, 
wild drumming. Uh, I, that's definitely a mad respect from me going in. Uh, and then the band, one of the bands uh, between Primitive Man, the only the other band that I was super super excited to see was uh, Mortiferum. I've always uh, pronounced their name as Mortiferum. I uh, actually asked the band last night, and it is pronounced, they pronounce it Mortiferum. So I picked up their tour shirt. It's kind of got this little uh, sparkly. I don't know if my camera is going to pick up the sparkly vibe going on from that. But I, I always, I'm a sucker for the uh, shirts that have the tour dates. So I will go around sparkling up the place and looking like a stripper just to have my tour dates on the back. And then, of course, I had to pick up some stuff from Primitive Man. I had hoped to pick up some CDs from these guys. Uh, the only album that I had in my possession was well, not even an album. The only uh, thing of theirs in my discography was the, in my, in my, in my discography, in my collection was the uh, Primitive Man Unearthly Trance uh, split on CD that Relapse Records did. I was like, I'm going to go, hopefully, I'm going to grab some of their CDs tonight. They weren't offering CDs. They had vinyl and tapes which we'll get to in just a moment. But I did pick up this long sleeve. It looks like the uh, immersion artwork kind of on the front there. And then it, there's the back and then it has print on the sleeves. I'm a sucker for long sleeves that have print down the, down the actual sleeves. They had that shirt available in sl short sleeve as well, which being is it's about to be 100 degrees outside every day i probably should have got the short sleeve but i went ahead and got the long sleeve because as i was saying i'm a sucker for the the arm print uh, i said immersion that was not the artwork from immersion it was the artwork from the new uh ep so well, I, don't, I don't even know if it's the artwork from the new ep but uh because i have immersion right here <clears throat> i went ahead and picked it up on vinyl um Usually there's some trepidation and, and, and a little uh, bit of me just saying, hey, I, I'm probably not going to listen to something I have on vinyl as often. But with Primitive Man, especially after the, the feelings left with me after the show last night, this is not going to be something that I'm just going to pull off the shelf every day and listen to. Uh, this is something that I have to be in a mood for. This is something that I have to be prepared for uh, mentally. Just just have that psych, psyche ready for uh, just something this dark and oppressive. Absolutely love this album. I'm glad to have it on a physical format now. Uh, this is the white, white with splatter edition, limited to 750 copies from Relapse. And I don't know, just kind of basic splatter white. It looks like gray and black and a splatter on the uh, on the vinyl itself open it up I haven't even this is the first time that I've actually opened this so we're opening it up and looking at it together there is a download code sorry I'm keeping that you guys can't have it especially on something that I own on vital I gotta have it on digital as well just to uh, just to be able to to listen to it on a whim but then it has the I guess a lyric fold out so very dissonant, um, noisy. I think uh, Thralls of Metal did a, a fabulous job on their newest review of the EP, the new Primitive Man EP, uh, kind of describing the sound of Primitive Man. Uh, they are they are something that you have to uh, be mentally prepared to listen to. They can they can put you. You have to be careful with something like this because it can put you in a dark place. And uh, if you're not careful, you can just kind of stay in that dark place. And then I picked up the new EP that I was just talking about. This is Insurmountable. Uh, this was released on, I think, Close, yeah, Close Casket Activities. I have not even opened it. It's still in the shrink wrap. So we're going to crack this one open together. I know I'm about to make some of you cringe by doing the shrink wrap with my pocket knife. But you know what? It's not something that I'm planning on selling or taking out of the collection so they've got this labeled as an EP um, technically it, it, it's not an EP I mean it's it's 38 minutes 30 I mean it, the lengthwise it, it you can't really call it an EP but if the band's calling it an EP we're gonna call it an EP so 
it has this little strip here I kind of like that I'm gonna gonna hang on to that when I put it in the uh, in the little the new plastic sleeve later I love the artwork on this and I mean that that for me that artwork that sums up primitive man that that's the that artwork encompasses the feeling that you're going to get from this band completely I mean it's just like you're getting lost in the void and you're just abandoned and left alone and terrified and it's just it's it's nuts I have to give uh, closed casket activities um, some definite props on this the the actual jacket I guess you would call this is super sturdy this is like a, a mad throwback to the vinyl heydays they did not skimp on the packaging on this at all they uh they're trying to convert me but it's not going to happen i'm still cd man for life but i don't even know what the variant on this looks like so we're going to find out together if i can get it out i was hoping there would be a download in there but no close but no cigar looks to be clear oh that's a gnarly gnarly looking I guess a splatter with a uh, I don't know what you would call that I'm gonna have to look that up after after I do the video so I know I'm probably the way I'm handling these vinyl or probably making some of you cringe but when you don't listen to the stuff every day and it's just something that you're going to pull off on a whim every now and again you can be a little bit I guess a little bit uh, not as careful with your stuff and then there's a poster I don't know if that's upside down I can't can't really tell maybe it goes like this either way spooky looking stuff I mean that's another that just kind of encompasses the feelings behind uh, primitive man so that's what I picked up at the show uh, definitely killer show I, I had a great time uh, definitely started feeling my age uh, I had to sit down after after um, jarhead fertilizer played um, it was time for me to take a seat they had some couches on the side and I, I sat down and watched the mortiferum and the primitive man sets from the couches on the side but I'm old I got arthritis what can you do and it was kind of nice to to be able to sit down and just absorb uh, the sound and and not have people bumping into me it, I don't know that was a show that it just felt like uh, being able to absorb the the uh, abrasiveness of the atmospheres and maybe that's why the the feelings of oppression are so so tough on me today but I wanted to talk about some stuff that makes me smile, some stuff that I, that that makes me happy, and people that make me happy. So, I, I did not too long ago uh, receive the newest edition of Death Rock Magazine. Uh, Darren over there is an awesome dude. Uh, I, I I love Death Rock, and I, I have to like I have to keep uh, supporting Death Rock now, just from the simple fact. It, it back in issue two, I think I've showed this before, but just in case I haven't, on the inside of uh the magazine there on issue two that came out last year there there's yours truly uh staring back at you it says watch lonnie on youtube so if you're gonna if you're gonna do that for me the least i can do is support your magazine um one thing that i love about issue three is it is chock full of album reviews uh I've, I've just been sitting here reading through some of this stuff you have newer releases being reviewed you have older older releases being viewed uh reviewed there's stuff on here that I had never heard of before that kind of gave me uh, some glimpses into some, uh, things that I need to go check out, just what I need, uh, something else to go spend money on. But uh, the guy knows his stuff. The, he, he, the interviews and everything behind this and the features, killer stuff. Go check out uh, Death Rock Magazine if you have not done so. Okay, uh, where do we go from here? Uh, there was a, a toy store of all things that opened uh, in a town about 45 minutes uh, for me about 40 45 minutes uh, for the those of you that don't know I live in the middle of nowhere uh, I had to drive almost two hours to the show last night and that's the closest venue 
for me to go watch uh, live music. So when I say uh, a, a town 40 minutes, that I mean, that's really not that far to drive for me to go find something that I like. Well, this toy store opened, and I go, and I've looked it through, like, some of the horror, and I've picked up some of the horror toys and, and, and that type stuff, but that's not what this channel is really about. I did pick up a couple uh, a couple of music-related toys, and I got the uh, Sarge from Stormtroopers of Death. Uh, this was put out by NECA. They do a ton of those uh, horror toys and stuff. The The detail that they put into Sarge here is, is absolutely crazy. It's taking everything that I have not to open this thing up and play with it. I've had it in my possession for a couple months now, and I keep look. I have it sitting. Usually, it sits right up on this shelf right here, and I look at it all the time. I'm like, man, I want to, especially if I go to pull out the uh, the Speak English or Die album or something along those lines. I want to. Uh, you guys that know this, if you follow me on Instagram, you know I'm always. Uh, taking pictures of the CDs and stuff with toys and posting it on there. It, it's taking everything I got not to crack this Joker open and, and, uh, and play with that toy. It's going to happen. It's just uh, when is the, is the question. And then I picked up this, uh, King diamond figure. And this one, I don't think I'm going to open just because I love the packaging on it so much. That slides off, and then you have the king, and it has all these, uh, like you can change out the heads, and it, it, I'm afraid if I open this one up, I'm going to um, lose some of the stuff, so that's another reason that I have not opened it up, and I think I'm just going to leave this one in the box just for that reason. I would I would be gutted if I opened it up and then lost some of the stuff. Uh, this was made by um, Ultimates. They were the, the company that did this figure, but this one was a bit more pricey than the uh, Stormtroopers of Death one, so I wouldn't feel as bad cracking that Sarge figure open, Sarge, Sergeant D. <clears throat> so there's a good chance if you follow me on Instagram, <clears throat> that you will be seeing SARS on a post at some point in the future. Okay, where do I want to go next? I really don't have any rhyme or reason to the other stuff that I'm going to show. It's just some stuff that I've been meaning to show, and I have not done so. Uh, I think I've shown this. If I haven't, I know I've talked about this band before. Uh, this is Ritual Fog with their uh, Visions of Blasphemy uh, demo. I know that... Uh, I bought four copies of this when I got in, and, <clears throat> and I kind of spread them around. I sent Nick um, out over at Thralls of Metal a, a copy. I sent uh, Jacob at, uh, I keep wanting to say Hymns of My Wake, at, at uh, the Upside Down Church. I sent him one when he bought some CDs from me. I don't remember who got the third uh, one that I sent off. I'm sorry. I, I just it's, it slipped my mind. It, I'm not trying to be rude and... And leave you out there but it's on this uh green shell i guess i could show the side that actually has the print and it's just three tracks uh right at about 15 minutes but uh, it's just old school dirty grimy death metal and i absolutely love it uh the second track of dirt and disease that's the one that just does it for me if you haven't checked out ritual fog please go check them out just killer killer old school death metal out of memphis uh, I got one more tape. I guess I'll go just stick with the tapes. Uh, this is Mike from uh, Wharf Lurch. He, this is um, one of his projects, and this is brilliant. Uh, this one is uh, Plasmodulated, and it is self-titled. It's, uh, I think, five tracks, just another little EP demo. Uh, this is more old-school death metal, but it, this is like uptuned old-school death metal. So many bands now are, are playing into that downtuned, um, doomy old school death metal si sound. This sounds like some of that metal that was coming out in the 90s that just that uptuned it, 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 it's brilliant. The the guys in, in War Flirch are geniuses in their craft anyway and you can tell that they, they have a, a love and a passion for death metal and it just comes through with something like this. The, the way that he can just change, uh, change up and, and pay respect to older stuff 
in a completely different way by, by uptuning is, is amazing to me. Uh, they have two versions of this cassette. Uh, this one, I believe, is called Ectoplasm. It's uh, kind of a green shell. Uh, the other one, I forgot what it was, the name of it was, but it's like a red, um, like the case there. It's kind of a red shell. They do still have these available on their Bandcamp if you're interested in checking that out. Uh, moving on, let's see. Um, Melanie loves death metal. Uh, if you follow my channel, I know you probably know Melanie's channel. Uh, she has a killer Instagram as well. She has a distro as well. They, uh, she puts stuff up. It's called Born Dead Collection. Um, it's, it's stuff that she's moving out of her collection to make room, uh, to fund other purchases, and that type deal. It's actually a really smart idea. I still have the big cartel that I started when I did the t-shirts. At some point, I may start listing um, albums that I'm looking to, to. I may have to just steal this idea from, uh, from Melanie. But I, I, every once in a while, I'll glance on there and see what she's got going uh, what she's moving. I saw this was on there. It was five bucks, and I had to grab it. It was the uh, the Corpse Gristle reissue of Devourment's um, Butcher of the Week. And I saw this was on there, and it was five bucks, and I said, click, I think I'll get it, and no regrets. So, yeah, I thought I would give you guys the, the heads up on her little distro there. That'll be linked up in the description, as well as her YouTube channel. I will try to link as much of this stuff up as I can. I, I can't make any promises. I mean, at some point I'll get tired. And she even threw a Born Dead collection sticker in as well. So the Born Dead uh, collection distro site will definitely um, be linked up down there in the description. But you all know, at this point, you all know Devourment. I mean, Slam, you know, Slam and Brutal Death Metal. They kind of forefathers of that. Uh, speaking of YouTubers, um, Liam over at Death Doom Metalhead, I, I feel like I'm just getting a YouTube crush on Liam. This is the second video that I've mentioned him in a row. Uh, this was he he showed something in a in a video not too terribly long ago, and it was the very first time that I'd ever even heard of this project. And just from the way he started describing it, just because of the general themes that were into the, the album, I was like, man, that, that sounds like something I have to check out. It had this paranormal uh, vibe going on. I'm into spooky shit. Sorry, I try not to. I try not to cuss on this channel, and, and that just slipped out. Uh, I'm, I'm into spooky stuff, and, um, and this is kind of funeral doom, has some death metal elements, going on in it that ha and it has like evps uh el electronic voice phenomenons um uh, buried in the mix and in into the tracks it's very interesting and i absolutely fell in love with this album on listening to it uh it's a project by cam lee so you're going to have the the death metal elements uh pushed in there but this is i'm going to butcher it too akatharta with a spiritus amundus this came back at this came out back in 2017 and somehow I never heard of it and if it had not been for Liam uh, covering this on his channel I probably never would have heard this and this has been one of the most played albums in my collection over the past month I have been I've been spinning this nonstop I've I've fallen head over heels in love with this album I love the idea uh, behind this uh, I know he said that Cam uh, had come out and said that he wasn't a believer in this stuff, but uh, from someone that has, I'm not going to come out and say that I, I've experienced things that that are unexplainable to me. I'll just leave it at that. And uh, the fact that they tie that those things into this album, it, it was so interesting to me, and it just captivated me. And I absolutely love this. I, I may end up playing this at some point. Again, today, it just depends on how my mood goes. I'm uh, more in a mood for very, very uplifting <laughs> things today, just from the general uh, vibes that last night put off. Uh, speaking of Cam Lee, uh, the, the the newest massacre, I picked it up not too long ago. They had a band camp sale going. Um, I think it was like five bucks off or something and free shipping. So I was like, you know what? I, 
I've been meaning to grab this. It's cheaper than trying to order it from Nuclear Blast Records. I don't understand how Nuclear Blast... I don't understand why people are still even uh, ordering from the label at this point because their, their shipping prices are absolutely uh, laughable. And it makes it, it makes it not even worthwhile. I can go find Nuclear Blast Records uh, releases elsewhere and pay less money buying it second from a second party just because of the, the ridiculous... Uh, shipping prices that they're offering over there but uh that being said uh nuclear blast aside this massacre album absolutely rips i, I I've, I've posted a couple of pictures of this on instagram i keep on touting my instagram I'm, but i have i've already shown just to kind of give you guys an idea of uh, how much play time that this has been getting you throw this in and i mean uh, cam lee has been hogging up uh, a lot of my attention as of late Speaking of Instagram, I guess we'll stick with that theme. Uh, I had a band comment on something that I posted uh, a little, not too terribly long ago, and uh, I, I just took it upon myself to to go check out their material, and I actually really liked it. Uh, this is a Stoner Doom band out of Canada. Uh, this is Astral Witch. Uh, this came out, I'm thinking in 20, maybe 2019, 2020. It's been out a little bit. Uh, but I really dug this. Uh, I've been in a kind of doomy, well, you guys follow the channel, you know, especially before COVID hit me, I was in like that whole, uh, I was like head over heels listening to doom all the time. And there's still remnants of that, that mood still there. And when I heard this, I was like, I definitely want to throw that in the collection now as well. But some very good uh, stoner doom out of Canada there. It would not be a collection update video for me if I didn't at some point uh, mention Paragon Records. It's only one CD that I got from them this time. I just happened to log onto the site. I was looking to see if they had something else in stock, and I saw this uh, on their storefront. And it, I mean, it's a bootleg, but I did not have uh, a copy of this. I didn't want to pay the astronomical price for a, a an OG copy. So. Uh, this is, I believe you pronounce it, Niflheim, um, Black and Thrash out of Sweden, classic stuff. It has their self-titled album and uh, their follow-up entitled Devil's Force on this. The Niflheim uh, self-titled album is about as flawless of an album as you're going to get. The Devil's Force album, uh, it's it's okay. And, and the fact that they're on the... Uh, the same disc is kind of unfortunate, but when you do bootlegs and, and you buy bootlegs and stuff, you kind of take what you get. Now, don't get me wrong. Devil's Force is not an awful release by any means. It's just uh, following up that, that self-titled is a is a very hard uh, task to do. Uh, this is a very well-done bootleg as far as uh, the sound quality and the, uh, and the artwork. I mean, you can kind of tell that it's printed off. I mean, it's not popping like like a, a genuine copy. This was uh, released. If you didn't know it was on a, uh, if you didn't know it was a, a bootleg, I'm not gonna say it. I've already cursed enough in this video. Uh, maybe my camera. But there, you can read the record label right there for yourself. So you know that 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 sounds like a genuine label, right? Uh, eBay. Let's move on to eBay. Uh, this is an album that I already had in my collection. The the disc that I have in my collection has a little notch on the on the ring on the inside. It does not affect the play of the disc, but you can hear it clicking in the CD player sometimes. So if it's not turned up, or if I'm like at a in a position of the room where I'm right by. The CD player, I can hear it clicking. I, I, that probably makes no sense to you whatsoever, but there's an actual indention where it was like scratched onto the disc and, and it knocks. And it drives me insane. And the more I try to tune it out and not listen to it, the worse it gets. And I logged on uh, eBay and I have some save searches that I do. And one is just like a, a generic metal CD. Um, search that I do like a price point like under eight bucks or something like that and this one was on there and I was like you know what I'm tired of the clicking we're going to get it probably going to get demonetized for even showing it in the video but uh, I picked up Burzum's Philosophum uh, say what you want about about Varg and Burzum themselves I mean but Philosophum is one of those classic uh, releases 
Uh, it is a, a very influential uh, black metal release. And I'm glad to have a, a copy of this that does not click. I got this for $4.99. So I, I thought, you know what? Five bucks and I can stop the clicking. I mean, I got to get it. Uh, I've got these two. I think I got these from uh, eBay. If I didn't, I picked them up on Discogs. Uh, one of them was a, an album that I sold. It had it in my collection, and, and I sold it like an idiot um, a few years ago, and I've regretted it ever since. It was almost immediate seller's remorse. I just recently sold some things uh, within the past month or so, and I'm sure there's going to be some remorse that comes along at some point, and I'll end up losing money by uh, rebuying the albums again. But when I sell stuff, I generally sell it fairly cheap, and I saw I, I've been regretting it ever since, and the... Every copy that I saw of this album that I wanted to repurchase was ridiculously priced. I finally found one that was like 10 bucks, and uh, they had another album from the same band going uh, for sale too, so I went ahead and grabbed both. Uh, this is Gerno Schagen, or I think that's how you pronounce it, Gerno uh, <laughs> German pagan uh, folky black metal, and, and I, I love this stuff. I guess it's more black and folk metal. But this is Mare Os Wandering Holland. And this album I, I love. I love this album. And I don't know what um, I don't know what I was thinking. I, I think someone offered me a, a price that I just couldn't pass up before. I, I don't know. I, it might have been when, when uh, several years ago when my wife was having uh, some of her surgeries and I had to move some stuff. Some stuff that I didn't really even want to. But I had to make some money fast to... Uh, if you're here in the States, you know the, the health care system is, is a bit bonkers, and I had to sell some stuff for those insurance copays just to get the surgeries done. But glad to have this back in the collection now. Uh, I've listened to this one several times since having it back. I kind of hugged it a little bit. I'm like, I'm never letting you go again. And then I also picked up uh, Win Winter Mython from uh, Journal Shagen, and I have not spun this one nearly as much uh, just because I don't have the uh, the the nostalgia tied up into this one the the search uh, when you have a collection like this the search is half the fun and I put so much effort into hunting this one back at an affordable price that it just kind of happened this album and I have a bond now if, if that makes any sense but uh, this one's still pretty good I do like the other a bit more but uh, I, I do I do enjoy this one as well. Had a little sticker there on the inside. And then I guess the last two that I'll show in this video, some more folk metal. I got these on eBay. Uh, this is a band that I'm slowly, slowly uh, starting to, to appreciate more and more every time I listen to them. It's kind of pagan-esque folk metal. Uh, this is Hyde Volk with... Uh, Wal Walhalla walked, and out of the two that I just picked up, this one is my favorite of the two. Very fun stuff here. Let me fix the inside. I know some of you are probably this is a one of those folky bands that that has a fairly large following already. So I'm sure most of you are already uh, familiar with this band. And then there's Uit Ud Grand. <laughs> from Hyde Volk. I know I probably uh, butchered that, but I mean, if that doesn't tell you that it's folk metal, nothing will. And there's the inside there. So a little bit of everything in this collection. I've been going for 30 minutes now, so I think I'll cut it off here. I have some other stuff that I'll show at some point, but a little bit of everything. Actually, just shooting this video has kind of helped uh, lift my mood a little bit. So that's definitely a good thing because I was I was in a dark place there uh, for a little bit. It didn't help that I went to the show by myself and then had to drive home like two hours by myself in the dark and no one else on the road. I, like I had to go down these 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 kind of country esque roads. And it was just absorbing everything, and, and the dissonance was still there, and the ears are still ringing. And I don't know, I was I was in I was in a dark spot, so I'm glad to be uh, coming back from that. Uh, moving forward, I have a collection 
video, the CD collection video, the new one of those will be up on Sunday. Um, I have a Gorehouse Records grab bag, which should be delivered today. So I will do a video for that at some point. It'll probably be uploaded next week. Uh, Metalhead Box is on the way, and I have an order from Life After Death on the way. And there will be a uh, CD collection video this Sunday and next Sunday for sure. I will try to get some more of those knocked out as well. That's all I've got for today. Uh, thank you guys so much. The the last video, the Pagan Flames video, has it's blown up. I don't know. I don't know if, who if if you shared that video with someone. I definitely appreciate it. All of you that watched it and liked it and commented on it, that probably helped the the YouTube algorithm as well. But the just the sheer amount of uh, traffic that that video has been getting is blowing my mind because I didn't just show anything too crazy and that it was only five CDs, but Right now, it's one of the highest watched videos that I've had in uh, probably this year. So uh, I am definitely, definitely grateful to you guys for that. As I said, that's all I've got for today. Stay classy, stay metal, and I will see you guys very soon. I promise.